So the year is 2022 and Amir Khan versus Kelbrook actually happened, which I still can't believe after all these years. But the first thing I want to talk about is Kelbrook's defense and specifically his use of bending down at the waist to mitigate Amir Khan's offense. Bending down at the waist is a simple yet effective defensive move because it avoids almost every punch option and you don't even need to see a punch coming to do it. So we're going to see Amir Khan throw a combination and Kelbrook just bends down at the waist to avoid almost all of those punches and then he resets and is back to pressuring Amir Khan again. But the important thing I want you to note is that Brook doesn't immediately bend down at the waist. He pulls the first punch, then bends down when he sees a follow up is coming. Because you see if Khan didn't follow up on the first punch, Brook would still be in his fighting stance to be able to punch back. So Brook ducks the follow up and Khan does a good job of stepping around at an angle on Brook while he's bent down, but Brook's able to create some distance to mitigate that offense. And you see the thing is bending down is a great defense, however you don't have many options from there besides stepping away or clinching. Defending punches is important, but it's just as important to threaten your opponent with counters, and bending down at the waist too much won't give you many opportunities to do so. Think of it as a low risk, low reward option. In another example, we're going to see Brook is going to come forward and is going to shoot a jab. And when the return jab comes, he pulls from the first punch, but waits for the follow up to come before bending down. He doesn't even have to see which punch is coming. He just bends down and avoids almost all of Khan's options. We see the same thing here. Brook is going to dodge the first punch of this combination without leaving his fighting stance. Then we see the follow up is coming. Then he bends down to avoid the follow up. And one more example we see when Khan returns with the jab, Brook pulls from the first one, then ducks down to avoid the follow-up. And a few seconds later, we're going to see the same thing. He's going to duck down after he sees Khan is following up. And he doesn't even have to see which punch is coming. He just ducks down and it avoids almost every option Khan has. And then he goes back to pressuring Khan. So just to reiterate, bending down is a low risk, low reward defense because you avoid most punches. However, you can't really counter back from there. If Brook tried to defend himself with other options without breaking his fighting stance, it would allow him to counter or at least threaten the counter, but it also makes him more susceptible to getting hit by Khan's attack. It seems Brook prioritized avoiding the punches only since Khan has fast hands in order to burn him out and pressure him to further break him down and this ended up working as we've seen. And this brings me to some problems I had with Amir Khan's defense or lack thereof. You see, Khan simply stands in front of Brook, waiting for something to happen. He showed he doesn't have the skill set to be able to stand his ground in front of Brook. He was either full offense or full defense. There was no mixture of the two. Whenever he was ready to commit to offense, he would simply throw punches. After he's done throwing or needed a breather, he would dance away. In a high level of boxing, you can't simply rely on this game plan because you will quickly burn out if for the entire round you're either punching, moving backwards, or getting punched. Especially against a naturally bigger guy, you're going to need to possess the ability to stand your ground while still threatening your opponent enough to keep him from walking right through you. And this could be done with feints, lead hand probes, level changes, and weight shifts, just to name a few. And what this does is it, it simply occupies your opponent and gives them something to think about. Of course, just sprinkling a few of these techniques in wouldn't have magically changed the outcome for Khan. However, they could have at least made it look a lot less, like a hot knife slicing through butter. More importantly, when standing still, Khan doesn't even threaten counter punches with his defense. He would simply stand there and essentially surrender control of the empty space completely, giving Brook a free opportunity to just punch him. Essentially, Khan showed his only tools to defend himself were punching and dancing away. Those are two very high energy consuming activities you probably can't keep up for 12 rounds straight. And to show you exactly what I mean by standing your ground, we need to look no further than what Terence Crawford showed against Kelbrook in their fight. So we're going to see Terence Crawford momentarily gets pressured back, however he's going to stop the pressure as you see he feints the lead hand, gives Kelbrook something to think about, he's also going to feint a level change which stops Kelbrook and he also feints the counter right hand as you see after a few seconds of this now Crawford is the one who is moving forward and setting up his own pressure while Kel Brook is the one who's defensively minded and Terence Crawford was able to do this without even throwing a single punch and without having to dance away frantically 
Compare this to Khan, as soon as he is pressured, he immediately punches and dances away because he's not comfortable standing his ground. And because he gives Brook no threats to distract him and his feet aren't even set, there's absolutely nothing stopping Brook from walking right up and punching him. And that's it, that's the video. I don't really know what else to say, so I'll just say the usual thank you to everybody who's watching, and special thanks to my GOAT tier patrons as usual. Jason Mahinen, Grant Gabriel, Dmitry Drozdov, Albert Chen, Jeff, and Andre. You guys keep the channel going. And to those of you who are new to the channel, please consider subscribing to the channel. And also consider supporting me on Patreon as well. I'll see you guys on the next one. Thank you all for watching.